Hey, Kevin here, Mr. DIY Dork from DIYDork.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple and really cool doormat just using two supplies, old pallet and some zip ties. It's a really fun project. It's really awesome. I think you're going to like it, so check it out. Okay, so here's the pallet I'm using, and uh, first off, before I get started with the video, I want to apologize if there's a lot of wind noise. We've had some terrible storms the last couple days, and uh, tornado warnings, and a ton of rain, so it's just really bad outside. So I want to go ahead and uh, tear this pallet down, and then take the parts inside so I can actually build it. But let me show you what we're working with. Okay, so this pallet I actually had downstairs in the basement of our house. When we bought it, the previous owner had about four or five of them down there, and things piled on them because the uh, basement actually got a little bit of water in it. So I decided instead of just throwing them out or giving them away, I'll tear them down and use them for something. And I decided this would be the perfect project to use them on. So let me show you up close some of the dimensions. Okay, so the planks, as you can see, are not quite six inches wide. They're more like five and three quarter. So if I rip it right down in half at three inches, the other one's gonna be a little too narrow. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna cut it right down the middle at about two and three quarters. I should have two pieces that are two and three quarter inches long, or wide, I mean. Then what I'm gonna do is the whole piece, I'm gonna chop it down so that not only do we have two skinny pieces, but we'll have four shorter pieces that are about 18 inches long. That's the, the uh, final dimension I decided to use. So I'm gonna chop those down until I get 10 of them, and then I'm also going to slice some of them in half and then cut them at 30 inches long, and I only need three of those. And that's going to be the supports underneath and then everything will be zip tied together after we do all the layout and all that kind of stuff. So let me go ahead and break it down and then uh, I'll take it inside and get away from the wind and start working on it. <laughs> Alright, so now that all the boards are uh, chopped down, what I did was I laid them on my work surface and if you can tell, I put pencils in between the spacers. The pencils end up being a perfect quarter inch spacer. So I just put one on each end between all the boards. Then I took one of the longer boards that I had and I just shoved them like that till they're all lined up and then I wrapped them in tape so that they wouldn't move. They're not going to be totally solid, but it'll help keep them from shifting too much as they're drilling holes and all that. So then, what I did next was I measured up a half inch, I did it on both ends, and I drew a line. And I did the same over there, a half inch layout line. This line right here is the exact center, so this is at nine inches. So then what I can do is later on, this is going to help us lay out these support boards on the bottom. I can line the outside edges of those to the half inch, and then the one in the middle will have to center it exactly on that center line right there. This is roughly what the boards are going to look at. Also, I should mention, they're all face down because this whole thing right now is upside down. We're going to build it upside down and then when you flip it over, all the magic happens. Okay, now we need to grab one of the support boards from the back and we need to lay out um, all the marks for where we're going to drill holes later for all the zip ties to go through. So what you want to do is find center of the board lengthwise and we cut them earlier to be two and three quarter, so half of that is one and three eighths. So you make a mark, do that on both ends, draw a line. Then that's just center, but the lines we're actually used for layout are gonna be a half inch of either side of that. So you do the same thing. You wanna measure uh, up from that line half inch and down from that line half inch. Make a mark, do both ends, join them, and these are the lines we're gonna use. All right, then once those uh, lines going lengthways are on here, what you wanna do is line up the board to all the other pieces that have been taped up. And you'll notice there's a little bit of gap here because this piece is slightly shorter than the width of all the other pieces put together. So you just want to line them up, make sure that both ends have about the same amount of gap. Then we're going to do the same type of thing. These boards up here are also two and three quarters. So we want to measure one and three eighths. Make a mark. Then just grab a square and line it up to that mark and go across these lines we made earlier. Okay, so now we got right here. Then what we can do is from that line, we can measure a half inch over and do the same type of thing. Here's a line, go a half inch over here, half inch over here, make marks. As you 
your square again. And there we go. Then what we can do is the corners of this one inch square is where all the holes are gonna be drilled. So this is the perfect layout and then we can do it all the way across. We just have a bunch of squares and then we're gonna be drilling holes where all these squares are. And I'll show you how to do that next. All right, once all the layout marks are drawn, what you can do is stack the other two boards underneath, wrap them really tight with tape in about four spots across them so that they don't shift and we can start to drill holes. So the first thing I did is I took a really skinny drill bit and I pre-drilled in all those corners, uh, maybe a quarter inch in or so, not very far, just enough so that I have a good starting point for the bigger drill bit. Okay, now the drill bit that I chose is just slightly bigger than the zip ties I'm gonna be using. So then all I gotta do is go through all these little corners and drill holes all the way through. It goes in real easy. All right, once those are all drilled, I'll show you how to clean them up. All right, once all those holes are drilled, I took them all apart, all three boards, and then I laid the first one down to line up to that half inch line we drew earlier. And then also I made sure that my gap on this side and then the opposite side were exactly the same. I clamped it down so I had to make sure that everything was basically flush to the edge of my work table here so I could clamp it in place and hold it tight. Then all we had to do is take the drill and use these holes as guide holes to drill through the pallet pieces that are going to eventually be the ones up top. Okay, so the other one that's just on the other side of this would be exactly the same way. The one in the middle is slightly different. The only thing I want to show you is that what I did was I found center and I drew a line. And remember we drew a line at center of the top panels. So when we go to drill that, we can just line those up too. All right, once all the holes are drilled, the one thing I recommend doing is labeling everything so that you know where the panels go. So I have my a backer board, B backer board, this is my C backer board. And of course all the top pieces, I have 10 of them, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way through 10. So I did here C1, C2, C3, I know it lines up to here, C1, C2, C3. I'll do the same for B. That way whenever we're putting the final assembly in this thing, we can put them all together and we know exactly where everything goes. All right, so we're almost done drilling and we can start putting the thing together real soon. But one last thing we want to do is to open up some of these holes. And I'll show you what I mean. When we run the zip tie through there, the head is bigger than the hole, so it sticks out. But we don't want that. We want it to sit flush inside the wood, so we need to drill out these holes a little bigger. Now, we're only going to mess with this line of holes on each piece. We're not even going to do the top because there's only going to be two heads because they're going to you know, cross over in an X. So you only use it two zip ties. So what I'm doing is taking a drill bit that is just slightly bigger than the head and I'm drilling into these holes here and I'm not even going all the way through, just deep enough that the head will uh, sit flush. Okay, and then see what happens is when you poke it through now, it'll sit flush just like that. Okay, now we can start cleaning up all the pieces, get the holes cleared out, and you can sand them down so that we can put a finish or stain or paint or whatever you want to do before we assemble. So let me show you how I'm going to clean these up. What I'm using is a countersink bit. It's just this little thing right here. If you don't have one, you should get one. These are really handy. Uh, all you got to do is basically use it like a drill bit, but you don't even have to go in as far, and it'll really clean up the hole. Let me show you real quick what I'm cleaning up. They just have little burrs sticking out. It's really noticeable on these big holes. That big drill bit just really tore up the wood. So when you use it, it's really simple. Put it in, press it, and then check that out. It, it's basically for a countersink, but it also just makes a nice finished hole. It works really nice on these bigger pieces too. You just kind of, if there's uh, little frayed pieces hanging out, you kind of shove them in there and just use it. And now you got a nice clean look that will just polish the whole piece and make it look a lot nicer. So I'm going to do that to all the holes, and then uh, I'll go from there. All right, so you can see everything now is ready to go. And I kind of skipped forward here a little bit, but what I did was I sanded everything with 60 grit. So I kept it kind of rough because they are just pallets. And then on a select few boards, I put on some homemade stain and I'll leave a link to that video if you want to check out how I made it. And then once that stain dried, then I put two coats of wipe on poly onto everything and it's ready to assemble now. All right, and once all your pieces are ready to go and you've either painted them or stained or whatever, 
You want to flip them upside down because we're going to assemble everything upside down. You want to make sure it's all in order, that it's all 1 through 10 and all your A's, your B's, and your C's are all together. And then I recommend starting with either your A or your C backer board. And you're going to line it up. And then we're going to actually start assembling with zip ties. I'm going to use black and white zip ties in a really cool pattern. Now the pattern I'm using for my zip ties is actually really simple. For the uh, C board and the A board up top, it's just going to be black, white, black, white. For the B board, it's going to be just the opposite, white, black, white, black. So it's kind of a cool pattern that's you know varied between each board. Now assembly is actually really simple. If you remember earlier, we drilled two of the holes a little bigger to fit the head of the zip tie in. So that's the hole we're actually going to start with. So you take your zip tie, you feed it through the bottom right, go through the bottom right of the pallet board on top, and then feed it through the top left on both boards. When it comes up, just zip it tight and pull it down into that hole that we drilled, the big one. And then if you need to pull it a little tighter, just to make sure everything fits really well, you can pull with a pair of pliers and then just kind of lightly hammer it into place. And you can just take a pair of scissors or wire snips or whatever and just snip it about a quarter inch or so. Then do just exactly the same thing with the other one, but just going from the opposite direction. Bottom left, feet up to the top right, come through, zip it together, pull it tight with your pliers, snip it down into the hole, snip it, and you're done. And then you can move on to the next, go all the way down the line. And then you can do the same with the others, and I'll show you what it all looks like when it's finished. All right, and there we go. That's what it looks like all finished. Really cool. Got some black and white going on. Got some dark and light stained wood. And you'd never guess that this was made out of pallets. It looks really, really awesome. And also, if you didn't want to even stain it, the back looks really cool, too. If you just wanted to do like a natural wood look, the black and white really shows off there. I think in a way, I actually even like it better this way, just all the natural wood. But it uh, looks really cool. And... Uh, you know, fairly simple design, it takes a little work to put together, there's a lot of drilling, but uh, you know, no other really, uh, no other tools that are really needed except for the drill and zip ties and, you know, measuring tape and just some simple things that you probably already have. So, hope you liked it, it was a fun project to make, I think it turned out really cool, and hopefully I can uh, figure out some more ideas like this, because this one was really interesting.